For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas rise? The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number six, printed in House Report number 108-206, offered by Mr. Paul of Texas. Pursuant to House Resolution 316, the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Paul, and a member opposed, each will control five minutes. House will be in order, please. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Texas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This amendment takes away the funding from the United Nations as well as any affiliated uh, UN agency. Gentleman from Texas has every right to be heard. Gentleman the House is, is not in order. Gentleman is correct. The gentleman from Texas will suspend until we do have order. <laughs> Members will please take their conversations off the floor. Would the gentleman suspend for a moment, please? The gentleman from Illinois. May I claim the time in opposition? I am opposed to the gentleman's amendment. The gentleman may. Thank you. The gentleman from Texas may proceed. Mr. Chairman, last year we spent $3.5 billion on the U.N. as well as the, uh, uh, the other agencies at the U.N. I do not believe that is money uh, worthwhile. It's not a good investment. Not only do I think the money is not uh, spent uh, well, I believe the United Nations on principle is incorrect. The House will come to order. The gentleman deserves to be heard. Members wishing to engage in conversation are invited to leave the floor. Gentleman from Texas. And, and Mr. Uh, Chairman, I would like to yield myself a total of two minutes at this time. Gentleman is recognized. The, uh, the amendment, as I said, defunds the United Nations as well as its agencies. We pay 21 percent of the budget, and on peacekeeping mi uh, missions, we pay over 27 percent. I think this is essentially wasted money. We also lose our sovereignty when we look to the UN for guidance. When we declared war, or when we went to war without declaration of war last fall, we had a resolution on the floor which cited the UN 23 different times. And I do not believe we should go to war under UN resolutions. And we have essentially been in Iraq under UN resolutions. Because in, not, in the early 1990s, it was under UN resolution that we went to war. The old-fashioned way of going to war was a declaration of war. We went into Korea over 50 years ago under a UN resolution. We're still in Korea, and we still have serious problems in Korea. And there is still a confrontation that we have with the government of North Korea. I do not see where it's to our benefit. I do not see where it's a benefit to world peace to rely on the United Nations. Even though we rely to, to, on the United Nations for authority, when we want the United Nations to go along with our policy, as our president asked earlier this year, uh, it was refused. So in many ways, we have a policy that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. We first rely on the United Nations, spend a lot of money, then they do not do our bidding. And it gets to be almost a joke around the world about some of the things the UN does. When you think about the Commission of Human Rights, and who is appointed as the chairman of the Commission on Human Rights? Nobody else other than Libya. And before the war, it was actually Iraq that was supposed to chair the Disarmament uh, Commission. So this, I think, in many ways reflects the ineptness of the United Nations and its inability to pursue any policy that is in our interests. So it is for this reason, whether it's rejoining uh, UNESCO and throwing more money down a, a, another, uh, on another useless program, we here are spending a lot of money, giving up our sovereignty. Much of this money should be spent here at home. The time of the gentleman has expired. The gentleman from Illinois. 
Mr. Uh, Chairman, I'm pleased to yield two minutes to the gentleman from California, Mr. Lantos. Gentleman from California is recognized for two minutes. <clears throat> I thank the distinguished chairman of the committee for yielding, and I rise, Mr. Chairman, in the strongest possible opposition to the Paul Amendment, which would cause great harm to our national interest. Mr. Chairman, I do not look upon the United Nations through, through rose-colored spectacles. It's obvious that for every criticism my good friend from Texas has of the United Nations, I could probably cite a half a dozen. But the fact remains that many of the activities of the United Nations are clearly in the U.S. national interest. The International Atomic Energy Agency monitors and exposes countries such as North Korea and Iran attempting to develop nuclear weapons. The World Health Organization works to prevent infectious diseases throughout the world, and it was critical recently in putting a stop to the spread of SARS. UNESCO, which the President wisely decided to rejoin, will provide us an opportunity to make our voice heard in the educational, cultural, and scientific field of the international organization. UNICEF, the United Nations International Children's Fund, is providing invaluable assistance across the globe to millions of children in desperate need. And the UN itself, more often than not, is helpful in attaining our own foreign policy objectives. The absurdity of the United States, the one remaining superpower, the most powerful civilizing force on the face of this planet in the 21st century withdrawing from the United Nations is nothing short of absurd. And I strongly urge all of my colleagues to reject overwhelmingly this amendment. The time of the gentleman has expired. The gentleman from Texas. I yield a, a minute and a half to the gentleman from Maryland, Mr. Roscoe. The gentleman from Maryland is Mr. recognized Bartlett. for one and one half minutes. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, whether you think the uh, UN is an efficacious organization or whether you think that it is a uh, useless organization, whether you think that we uh, are advantaged as a country by being members of the UN or whether you think we ought not be a member of the UN, you can vote for the Paul Amendment with confidence that you're doing the right thing. Let me explain. Both the Department of Defense and the Congressional Research Service have documented that we have spent over $19 billion of taxpayers' money on legitimate UN peacekeeping activities. Now, the UN has legitimized our claim that this ought to be credited against our dues because they've credited 1.8 billion of this against our dues. I'm going to vote for this amendment. I'm going to vote for any amendment that denies funding to the UN without any argument whether we ought to belong to it, without any argument whether it's good or bad, with the simple argument that in all fairness, please do an accounting of the monies that we have spent on legitimate UN peacekeeping activities. Please credit appropriate amounts of that to our UN dues, and then if there are dues left over, we'll pay those dues. But until that accounting is done, everybody in this Congress, we are in very tough financial times now, ought to vote yes for the Paul Amendment. That will demand that the accounting is done, and then we can debate another day whether or not we ought to be members of the UN or whether or not it's an efficacious organization. But for today, the simple fact that we have not been credited for almost $17 billion of monies that we spend on legitimate UN peacekeeping activities is more than a legitimate right to vote expired. for this amendment. Vote for the Paul Amendment. Thank Time you. Time the gentleman has expired. Gentleman from Illinois. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I yield myself uh, such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized for as much time as he may consume. Uh, this is a tempting uh, uh, amendment to the bill, but uh, uh, more mature thought says no, it's not, a, not all that good an idea. The fact is we still need the UN and its agencies to promote peacekeeping efforts in some parts of the world to assist in the global anti-terrorist campaign to help 
rebuild Iraq and Afghanistan to promote nuclear non-proliferation by rogue states such as Iran and North Korea and help implement our legislation designed to fight against HIV AIDS. Without the World Food Program, there would be more starvation and suffering in the world. Without the Food and Agriculture Organization, there would be scant support for global food standards. And without the International Civil Aviation Organization, there would be no effective management of civilian air traffic around the world. Finally, to the extent that we decide to commit any U.S. troops as part of a regional West African peacekeeping force in Liberia, we certainly shouldn't be cutting off funding for U.N. peacekeeping when we will need those same peacekeepers to relieve our troops, providing us with an exit strategy safeguarding our interests. With great respect, uh, I urge the defeat of this amendment and reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves his time. The gentleman from Texas. I yield myself the balance of my time. The gentleman is recognized for one and one half minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I once again urge a yes vote on this amendment to limit the funding uh, to the United Nations and to all its agencies. The gentleman from California mentioned that there were some programs under the United Nations which were sort of type feel-good programs, social welfare programs, and I think I would grant that some of these programs have had some benefit. That in itself is not enough for me to endorse uh, the concept of uh, international welfare through uh, the United Nations. Uh, however, too often I think they leave doing these programs that are designed to help people who are truly suffering versus getting involved what we call uh, 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 peacekeeping missions. The United Nations uh, are not allowed to declare war. They never go to war and yet too often we get involved in war. Uh, they pass a peacekeeping. That's why they were called peacekeepers in Korea, and that's why it's a peacekeeping mission when we go to Iraq. But still, the armies are raised, and the young men are called off, and people are killed on these peacekeeping missions. And therefore, I say that the uh, the United Nations has tended to take away the responsibilities of this Congress to make these very, very important uh, decisions. I believe in many ways that by joining the United Nations, we have allowed our Constitution to be amended merely by U.N. vote. If the U.N. votes and says something and we go along with it, we do that by majority vote here in the Congress, where if we look to the Constitution for the authorities that we are allowed to do and what we are not permitted to do, we look to Article 1, Section 8, and what the U.N. is doing is it is not permissible under that article. And I yield back. Time of the gentleman has expired. Gentleman from, gentleman from Illinois yields back. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Texas. As many as are in favor will signify by saying aye. Those opposed will say no. no. Opinion of the chair of the no's Mr. Habit. Chairman. Gentleman from Mr. Texas. Mr. <coughs> Press the recorded vote. Pursuant to Clause 6 of Rule 18, further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Texas will be postponed.